Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm taking a look at DxO Photo Lab 5. It's the new version that came out about a week or so ago, and there's some new stuff in it. They have uh, basically updated control points a little bit. They've added control lines, which is cool. It's like a gradient, but gives you better control. They've made a lot of changes around metadata and keywording, which although not sexy, is useful, uh, certainly in certain circumstances. And they've also sped up Deep Prime, which is their uh, amazing raw file noise reduction. And that stuff is uh, quite a bit faster. But most importantly, for many of you, it supports Fuji RAW files, so that's pretty cool. This video is going to be kind of a high level. I'm not going to dive into all the nuances of everything. I kind of want to do an overall kind of high level look at the product, at these new things, and then just kind of try to answer the question, should you upgrade or not? Because uh, that was the first thing when I got the product and started looking at it. Uh, you know, there's some nice things that have been added, but is it enough to make you upgrade? Obviously, you'll have to be the judge of that. So let's uh, let's get into it. Here it is. I am in the uh, editing menu. As you can see, the edit module. I'm on local adjustments. And as you may recall, in the past, you can right click and then get, uh, get a control point. Let's say you want to add a control point. I've got a big one right there. Um, if you remember when they updated the Nick collection, they basically added the ability to adjust chroma and luma masks uh, within the mask view. So when you click on show mask, um, you have Chroma and Luma over here now. So they've basically taken what they did with, I think it was just Silver Effects Pro in Viveza, and now that's included here in Control Points in Photolab. So I think that's pretty cool. As you can see, as you adjust these, it will adjust the mask sensitivity. Um, and of course, as you know, you can move this around uh, to you know make sure that you're basically targeting uh, targeting the proper areas. And so that has been added to the control points, which I think is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and click to um, delete that. But the new feature is a control line. And so uh, again, right click to bring up this masking selection menu and control line is like that. So you just click and drag it just like a gradient. And as you can see, it's basically adding the mask there. I'm still in show mask, which is actually probably better. Um, it would normally look like that. You've got your menus here for adjusting things. So you can increase the brightness, let's say. For example, maybe I want to add some clear view plus to give it a little bit of crunch. Maybe I want to make it a little bit brighter. And maybe I want to lift the shadows just a tiny bit. I'm just kind of hacking. This is not actually an edit of this photo. But again, you can show mask. And if you recall, with the control points, because they're circular, you can move them around to adjust the mask. Well, you can't really move this because it's a straight line. So they give you this dropper and you can take this dropper and you can drag it around and see how it affects and adjusts your mask um, accordingly. So that's something that's new, but the control lines themselves are quite new and it allows you to isolate areas when you have something like this where basically a gradient filter would do, but you want to control the masking a little bit better. These control lines can come in really handy. I'm going to go ahead and click to um, draw, uh, stop showing the mask so that you can actually see the photo. But that's a new feature. It's pretty cool stuff. And then of course you can add multiple masks to a photo. I could add a new mask, put it into the sky for example, and edit the sky to my heart's content. Actually, let me go back to show masks. And here, once again, you've got Chroma and Luma on this as well. So both on control points and on these uh, new control line, you have the Chroma and Luma adjustments. So remember, Chroma is around color and Luma is around light. So again, I'm kind of hacking here, but uh, there's an adjustment based on Chroma and Luma and adjusting that. And that looks terrible right there. So I need to go fix that. And just like control points, they have the ability to what's called protect an area, which is kind of like adding a negative control line. So if you need to isolate part of the photo, but it's overlapping something, you can use that to basically remove it from that section. All in all, a nice feature, more control over the mask than you would have if you just did a gradient. And I think that's a welcome addition to Photolab 5. Now let's pop into the library and talk about metadata and keywords. Okay, as you may remember in Photolab 4, the metadata and keywords were actually showing up in the editing module next to each photo, but now they've been placed over here on the right-hand side in the library uh, module. So makes a little bit more sense, I think, to have it there, and it's handy. Now, there's a couple of different things that are new and different. Um, IPTC here, you can fully edit that, but one of the cool things is you can actually sync it with Lightroom. So if you go into your Preferences panel and go over here to Advanced, you can click Always Synchronize, and that will allow you to sync via XMP sidecar files with Lightroom. So I could come in here and type in my name, you know, as a creator, for example, 
and then sync that with Lightroom. So if you're going back and forth between libraries, for example, or if you just use both editors for different reasons, you can keep your IPTC metadata in sync between the two applications. You can also go to File and Sidecar and Export, and then that file can be read individually by Lightroom if you're not doing it automatically. They've also added the ability to copy and paste metadata and keywords from one image to another, which can come in handy. And speaking of keywords, I think the updates here are actually really useful. As you can see on the right hand side, you can see keywords that are tied to that particular image, as well as a keyword list, which is pulling from all the photos in this folder. I just have this one folder connected to DxO. Now, some of these keywords are really old. So for example, when I first created these files and imported them into Lightroom a long time ago, I was using a Aurora HDR quite a bit. I could just come in here and remove that keyword from the image and there you go. But the cool thing for me is that you can nest and create hierarchies. And so I'm gonna go down here towards the bottom where I've got UK and United Kingdom. And so I used to keyword say United Kingdom and then also say UK, things like that. But for me, let's say United Kingdom is the header that I want and maybe I want UK, even though it's the same thing, I can drop it in there and now I've got a nested hierarchy. Well, you know, I also see another keyword here that, hey, guess what? That's Wales. And while Wales is not part of this image, this was taken in Southern England, that's the same image I was editing a minute ago. Um, Wales is in the United Kingdom. So once again, I might drag this up here and drop it on United Kingdom. And you can see that I've got both UK and Wales nested under United Kingdom. For this image, UK is turned on, but maybe it's redundant. So I could turn that off and you can see that it disappears. And if for some reason this photo had been taken in Wales, which it wasn't, but for this example, we'll pretend it was, I could just click on Wales, turn it on, and it'll show up there in the keyword list. So you can create these hierarchies and basically get super organized. Again, these kind of updates to the product aren't super sexy. They're not like, you know, sky replacement or something, you know, new or interesting or different or even technical, but this is useful stuff for keeping track of your images. It's going to improve search, things like that. And I mentioned an update to Deep Prime. It is faster and also it supports Fuji RAW files. I've got a .raf right here. And this is a Fuji RAW file taken with my X100V, which is a cool little camera, by the way. So I've got this image. And of course, if you're on the detail panel, you can see that you can use Deep Prime. Keep in mind, you have to export the photo with the Deep Prime adjustments in order to see it. So I can't really demo that here, but just keep in mind that the raw files from Fuji will now work in DxO with Deep Prime. And by the way, I do want to note that the support for Fuji, they say is still in beta at launch. Seems to work fine for me, but I just wanted to point that out. By the way, the upgrade sells for 99 and I believe it's on sale for 79 for a limited time. And the full product is 219 normally, and I believe it's on sale for 165 for a little while. I will say overall Photolab 5, it's a great product and overall Photolab, I like quite a bit. By the way, they also announced a new version of Film Pack, which is Film Pack 6. I'll go take a look at that in a separate video, but it does integrate nicely into Photolab 5. So like I said, great product, a lot of power, a lot of capability. There's lots of great tools and this is not a demo video of everything that you can do with DSO because you can do a lot. And so the question for me that I think you might be considering as well is, is the upgrade worth it? So at 99 and short term, you know, time pricing is $79. Is it, is it worth it for what you're getting? Because the updates to the control points with the Chroma and Luma, fantastic. I mean, they give you better control and better sensitivity to your mass. So your edits are going to be more, more precise with the control points. Awesome. Control line, you have that same Chroma and Luma adjustment. So again, sensitivity to the mask is fantastic. And just being able to do that with basically a gradient um, is fantastic. And I think that's awesome. The metadata and the keywording updates, very useful, although I think a narrower use case. I don't think that would apply to everybody. For example, it won't apply to me a whole lot. It's cool. And if I was perhaps leaving Lightroom or Torn and editing between the two and wanting to keep things in sync, it would make a lot of sense for me, but I'm not really doing that. And then that leaves the Fuji shooters. Those of you that shoot Fuji and always wanted to try DxO, but couldn't take advantage of Deep Prime, which is amazing noise reduction. It's really world-class. Um, that's going to be an attract, uh, you know, quite an attractive element to this, I think. But for everyone else, is, is it a worthwhile upgrade? Are you getting enough? I don't know how to answer that question, to be honest. I think for me, uh, I'm a little bit on the fence. I think the, uh, the updates to the control points, if you use control points and think that you would use control lines quite a bit, it very well might be worth it in order to have that more accuracy to the mass that you're creating. Um, and if you're a Fuji shooter, I think you'd be pretty interested. But um, overall, 
I don't feel like there's a whole lot of new stuff. Like when I think of an upgrade, which to me is a brand new version, which this is because it's version five and the previous version was version four, I think of there typically being a lot more new features. On One's new product, quite a few new features. Uh, Luminar's new product that's coming, quite a few new features. And so in comparison to those other apps, I feel a little bit like there's not a whole lot here. But again, I think it's going to depend. If you're a Fuji shooter, you might be really interested in that. And if you depend on the accuracy of your masks for uh, the control points and now the control lines, it very well might be worth it. And one of the ways I look at it is if you pay $99 for the upgrade and you use this thing for a year, that's about two bucks a week. So not a lot of money, certainly less than just getting a coffee, which many people will go do each day. So um, in the scheme of things, it's not a lot of money if you put it in those kind of terms. I'm just trying to decide, you know, for the average user, will they get enough out of it and take advantage of those features enough to make it worth it? Again, it's a question that you'll have to answer for yourself. Everybody's situation is unique and personal, and I won't pretend to be able to answer that question for you. I just think it's something to think about. Overall, great product, absolutely great uh, power and control over your images with the different masking tools and the filters and the noise reduction. And if you happen to get a film pack as well, you got a lot of different options there. And even paying full price for Photolab 5, if you don't have any of the previous versions, paying $219 full price, that's still a little over $4 a week. So again, if you're using the product and really editing a lot, a, less than a dollar a day for this much power and control, is really, frankly, a good value. So that's a high-level over, overview of kind of the new stuff in Photolab 5. Overall, solid product. I really like it. I just think it's a question you have to answer your, for yourself uh, whether or not you're getting enough features, enough new stuff to make the upgrade worth it. Something to think about. If you would like to see more videos covering some of these features as well as other things in DxO, please let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Leave a comment down below and um, I'll be back soon with another video, my friends. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon, and adios.